Uh, mind That's... put your phones on silent and stuff, just, yeah. just in case. Uh... Hi everyone, welcome to Ben's Business Podcast episode number 51. This was an impromptu uh, get together between the the three of us who have bo all read the book Building, it's not, I'm about to say another book, <laughs> Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. And we've all been reading the book ourselves. Uh, I read it about a at least a month ago. And I've got Philip here, who's uh, an entrepreneur. He set up multiple businesses and he's just recently finished the book. And I, he joined the Ben's Business Book Club after we all met at the 10X UK tour in Glasgow. And Ashton's here as well, who's also an entrepreneur, a, a portrait photographer. But I'll get them to introduce themselves. Uh, but we all met at a conference and we, we were all in Ben's Business Book Club together and we're discussing and basically doing a, our takeaways from the book Pitch Anything. So, Philip, would you like to introduce yourself first and give us a Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I'll give a good brief background. I've kind of already run over this. There's a bit, a bit of a life story as well. Um, my first business was a dog walking business when I was about 11, 12, something like that. Went into their education and all that jazz went through. Um, main interest was rugby. Uh, had a series of injuries which stopped me from playing rugby. Uh, went into personal training, which was always a passion. I had my first client when I was like 15, which was a school teacher. Um, went down the normal gym route. So had a PT company, that side of it. And then went, to be honest, became a bit disheartened that I didn't have control over what I wanted to do and working in a normal sort of gym environment. So I decided to go and work for a startup company, which was in the tech industry. Alongside that, I went, I can start up my own gym. And I've now been an example of um, working in the fitness industry and in a startup, put them together, created my own gym, which I'm now just a shareholder of. So I stepped back from that. And I have a series of property companies now, which specialize in helping people with excess capital invest into property, specifically around Cambridge, or landlords based in Cambridge, which want a hands-free solution. Uh, okay. So that's kind of where I am now. Well, good story. <laughs> we'll, we'll need to learn more about that. And Ashton, do you yeah, want okay. to give an introduction about yourself? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a portrait photographer slash business student you can say because I'm reading so much about business realizing that you can't just have a trade to earn money you need to learn business package whatever your skills are and um, I so my entrepreneurial journey you could say started when I started photography realizing you know oh I can do something for people and that was after I finished uni so unlike Bill I didn't start at 11 I started 20 whenever I finished uni what how old, how old am I now 29 six years ago yeah so 23 yeah so I started after I finished uni realizing right I want to do my own thing how do I do that start photography realize that's not going to get me an income start learning business and that's where I am so here learning about business and wanting to push past photography eventually at one point to keep people business themselves and just to embrace who they are basically so yeah embrace who they are and make the most of who you are to help the world really yeah yeah um and for those that don't know me you might be watching on uh, phillips or ashton's uh, profile uh, i'm the i started ben's business book club which is a community of uh, 1200 avid book readers of business books uh, mainly non-fiction and business books self-help um, and even philosophy and beyond so i my expertise is lead generation through search engine optimization, ranking websites higher on Google. And I started that business about eight years ago. I've done so much personal development in the last week at the 10X UK tour and the super genius workshop in London uh, that I've almost lost my voice. So that's why I'm sounding a bit dodgy just now. <laughs> um, so what I want to do is just maybe we'll go around and give some of the key takeaways that we got from first the 10x uh, UK tour since all three of us were at that I never met you in in person Philip but um, no. I would love to hear what your your takeaway was since I've not spoke to you yet and then Ashton can share hers after you yeah so the 
10 X, I suppose I had, uh, I knew what I wanted to get out of it. Um, I kind of knew what was going to be on offering and how it was going to be approached. And I think, um, when I first met Ashton, I even pointed out that there is going to be a sales pitch to make sure you know what you want to get if you want to buy something. Yeah. Um, which I think is a general tip to anyone going into business. If you're going to events like that, you know, there will be a sales pitch. It's the only way they can put them on. You know, the actual ticket price usually just doesn't cover the rent of where they are. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, what I got from that um, is to be honest, one of the most valuable things was actually, you know, going for a, a higher level. So I think I can't remember what they called them now, but I, we were like a platinum or a premier premier or something okay. ban but it meant that actually you got a, an enhanced sort of networking aspect to it so we went for dinner um and there was there was more of an intimate sort of side of it so i always think for me going to that it was very much about the quality of networking and other side of it that i was going to do everyone's going to be able to listen to grant everyone's going to be able to see this everyone's going to be able to do that you know that's standard what else did i want to get out of it was quality networking and actually get to form some relationships so i knew for me, um, that going for the the higher band was adhering to what I wanted to do. And then on the side of that, I knew I wanted to go on to uh, Grant Cardone's university uh, program. And they always do a discount at those events. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I got out of it. I, I, I had an agenda of what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, saw it, executed, done. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to go to these conferences with an agenda like that, like a a, a plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's it's so easy to get kind of caught up in it all, and just you know get super psyched for everything, and then just you know go full baller and just buy everything, um, <laughs> which I wouldn't recommend to anyone. <laughs> know what you're kind of getting into, no matter what. Uh, not to say that not to say that what they're doing, um, you know. It, is untrue or anything like that you, you just, yeah you just have to know what you want to get out of it but i thoroughly enjoyed it really enjoyed meeting all the people uh, and the content was great even you know from just the presentation point of view um not just and the some of the stuff that we got from the uh, being in the higher uh, the higher seats more expensive seats um was outstanding but yeah I, I th to be honest, I think more people should do that sort of stuff, whether it's, you know, um, hosting them as well, uh, but also going to those types of events that I think they've got, a, in some cases, a bad reputation of being a bit cheesy and American. Um, but actually, you know, if you if you go along to them and you kind of like, you know what you want to get, there's some really good content out there. A lot of the time, people overcomplicate things and, you know, these kind of these seminars and other chats with people just clarifies it and makes it all a lot easier and a lot more uh, achievable. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And there, there's a lot of value. What about you, Ashton? Me, it was, I was fangirling. I wanted to see Grant Cardone in person. I was like, I need to see him in real life. And then like, it's one of my, oh yeah, I got to see him in real life, like ticks, ticked off. Do you know what I mean? Um, but mostly the energy, that was one thing I didn't realize would be the biggest impact for me was the energy of being around. It's one thing to watch these people on the screen, on, on the computer and be like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, like I understand what they're saying. I get it. But then it doesn't sink in with you when you turn that screen off. Whereas when you're in that room, in the presence of them, you, you just get that. You just get it. That's what I, for me, I don't know if that was just what I went through or if it's what people feel as well is you just like like there was a lass who was there Aisha she was saying how um what difference it was in the energy of the people who went so the people who got the cheaper seats and you noticed it at lunchtime most of them were on the phone for an hour sat on their own just not like keep themselves to themselves they're all closed you know and um, but the people who are further down they were so much more open so much more chatty so much it was just a lot better energy and people who were talking on the stage they were even more so because they keep pushing themselves and that's the biggest thing i got from it because i know a lot of the info that they were saying anyway and um, because i've read loads of the books and that he's got mm -hmm. everything like that but main thing was energy and again it was the connecting it was the networking with people like like that is just invaluable like now I've, it's it's absolutely amazing to have friends who are just like me who are wanting to better themselves because i have nobody 
until I went to that event, I didn't have anyone who wanted to push themselves higher than the local town that I'm in, you know. So people in the local town, yeah, they, like I know some entrepreneurs and people like that, but they just they're still local. They're not doing the whole grant thing of 10x in of thinking bigger and you know because it's too far fetched, it's too impossible, you know, with people that are like you know me that are like, oh, what you see is what you can get. You can't get anything that's not been done before you know so that was the biggest takeaway was meeting people who are breaking the boundaries who want to break boundaries and just feeling the presence of what the people are like around you is that the biggest takeaway for me you know really was yeah, yeah we, we we tend to get like that like you said that this the uh, about you you can read the books about like the 10x rule and um, as Oz as autobiography as um, be obsessed or be average and sell or be sold and you get all those takeaways from the books and you, you implement you mem- implement some of the stuff but when you you hear him in person really living this stuff he's teaching it makes a whole new difference to the, like like a, re- a whole new realization to like what what can actually be done and he I was speaking to Grant Cardone after his talk and he was speaking to Elena and saying uh, let's go we, we need to go because he, he had to cancel the Monday mastermind and I actually watched that happen and he, he literally got back to Miami before I got back to Fife from Glasgow I'm sure uh, at that night and I was just like like it, it really hits when you see the person behind like this content about thinking bigger and things he's really living that as well mm-hmm. and i think that makes a big difference when you see that conviction yeah. Yeah. i mentioned that in the last time i seen grant cardone there's 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 the vibe and the buzz within the room of that the, obviously the idea of seeing grant cardone for that reason but going beyond that reason which is more important really um it's not about getting a selfie with celebrities it's it's about um really taking this home and uh into your business and and then applying it but yeah like some people were there for the selfie and uh, gary vaynerchuk says says stuff like that that people do shit for the selfie (laughs) and it's true Uh, but then like you go a step further beyond that and like you've you've read the books and you you want to see the author and just hearing him even repeat some of the stuff we've read in the books because everyone can get that information off his videos online but uh, seeing him up on stage there uh, really living it, it makes a big difference. And then on top of that, like you're saying, the networking. I, I, w- I will admit, I, I was in the cheap seats, uh, but you have convinced me that uh, the VIP seats or advanced seats is, is obviously more valuable for the people surrounding you. It makes a lot of sense that like these people are more committed in a way. The people who are in the front seats, they're they're more throwing themselves in that they've spent more money. It's just like when you spend a lot of money on a workshop or a conference, I spent a lot of money on one down in London and I really threw myself in it. I was on the microphone like every second time we got a chance to share something. So mm. yeah, you tend to throw yourself more in it the more you spend as well. <laughs> well, it's, it's the old age old saying as well is, you know, um, you're a product of the environment or the people that you surround yourself with. And, um, yeah. you know, going to those events, you know, that's a key thing there. You, you get a lot of people. Yeah. And, and as Ashton said, the people who are at the front, they were, you know, we're, you know, networking, joining around people, and you all have that opportunity. You know, especially in the breakouts, and you know when we go for lunch. But you can see how the like the room changes, and you kind of go, well, which ones do I want to be in? You know, ultimately, people at the yeah. front have paid more money. Don't mean to generalise, but if they've got, you know, if they've paid the extra money there, you know, they're um, they're wanting to get more from it. So go and talk yeah. to them because they're probably going to be proactive. They're probably going to be driven. They're probably going to be, you know, yeah. maybe a little bit further ahead. You know, some won't, won't be. Some will be starting from scratch. You know, by all means, but. Yeah. You know, generally, if, if you've yeah. invested your time and your money into to a particular level, and someone who's yeah. just sort of at the back of the room and just tried it out, go well. Who do I want to be around? Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's those people. It's the same when you're networking in general. You know, rather than yeah. network people in the room, go and grab the speaker and have a chat with them when they're you know, exactly. The yeah. Counts. I think also like just planning before you go because like there was I felt like there was a few people I spoke to who were there. Two seconds, someone. Like, they just uh, flung money at it, thinking, oh, if I spend, get the biggest, best ticket, I'm going to get the best advice. And and it's like you're saying about the things they sell. Um, uh, oh, you know, it's a thousand odd pounds or whatever it was they were selling. You're thinking, oh, that's a lot of money. 
but is it though? Because like for me, if I had the money, I would have gone and got it there and then. But I had, I bought another business thing, so that was my business expense this month gone, and I would have bought it because I know my path is to be like I want all that. That's going to help me get to this stage in life that I want to get to. Where there's a few people who are there who are like, oh, this is all new to me. I don't. I'm not sure. Or you know, like so they've been introduced to this information for the first time, whereas I've been introduced to that information several times and I've weighed it up and weighed it up and gone you know what I do need to know more in that area and that is what I need to focus on right now I know I can spend time on it so for me it's like having that self-awareness of knowing what exactly you need right now to put the money into it you know and be happy with what you've ordered so do you think you would have important. gone for a um would have purchased more if you had yeah. the opportunity to yeah, if I had the money, I would have gone for it because I, I just know because of research beforehand, oh, that is information I really need. Whereas somebody who knows information like that might be looking for information in something else currently. So it's all about timing and absolute present awareness of what you need right now in this moment in life. Right, this month, if, you, if you're going to study something, what are you going to study? Or this next year, what are you going to study? Like, you know, that's what you're selling, you're selling education. Is that the education you need this month, this year. You need to know that yourself. No one else can help you in that regard. So until you know that, you won't find the value in what people are selling because you're not clear in the first place, if that makes sense. So I found that was a good takeaway. And I wish people, I just wish people knew what they need more, if that makes sense, because then they would get more value out of what is around them, you know, and what they've, the event they've gone to and yeah so i think that helps as well mm. Mm. and this this call is about um p pitch anything book as well so i i think we could get on to that now as well uh dylan's left a comment saying the selfies are still worth it too and i do agree with that the selfies are worth it because you when you get around like these big guys you're associating with these guys in a way and you put on your Facebook, it is like you're now associating with Grant Cardone. And it, it looks good for that reason, I guess. It brings your authority up when you surround yourself with people like that, that you're you're clearly getting around. Um, so there's 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 value that comes from that as well. <laughs> um, and ultimately, if you're in a picture with them, I only managed to get one and it was rubbish. So I can't publish up. It just looks like a blur. But um, <laughs> if, you tag, if you tag him in it, everyone that he um, is connected yeah. with, sees it as well and then they'll probably you know follow you or whatever you've just instantly you know expanded your network yeah um or you know of people who are interested in grant cardone or you know work directly with him you know that's a huge powerful network mm. and you've just exposed yourself to it in a non-flasher type way yeah exactly like you so can. like the the book pitch anything so i've got like a the first i think it was the first uh, 76 words just to, for people who are watching to hear about the pitch anything book by Aaron claff i just wrote it down here because it's really good he says there's a fundamental disconnect between the way we pitch anything and the way it's received by the audience and basically this book is about connecting fixing that problem where people are disconnected from the message that you you're putting out there. Uh, it's about connecting with uh, a, a different part of the mind so that people actually are listening and receiving what you're saying. They're not just waiting for you to finish your pitch. And this book is fixing that problem. He's using a methodology where he, he generates, I think he says, uh, 2 million, he raises funds for large businesses like Marriott uh, at the rate of 2 million per week. And I thought that was really impressive, the amount of, like he's raising for these companies through his pitching techniques. And there's so many other people who do this uh, venture capital raising and people go to him for the reason that he's studied the mind, basically, how the mind works and how people receive things. And uh, as Ryan Pinnock's been teaching me, uh, super genius, uh, who actually recommended this book to me. Uh, Ryan Pinnock teaches psychology and things, and he's an entrepreneur. He's a very good entrepreneur and uh, good at sales. And pitch, pitching anything is really a really good way. Like, forget about sales. You can when you can learn this stuff and learn about the mind in this way. It's all about connection. And Ryan Pinnock always says connection beats perfection. So, like, I could read this word for word that I've got here, 
and bore people to death with all the, the logical facts about the book. But this connection by looking at the camera, looking at people in the eyes and uh, talking from the heart rather than from over overdoing it from the head, uh, it changes the, the way that people listen to you. And I think that's one of the, the key bits I got from the book and how he, he described the book uh, in, in a summary. So, Philip, would you like to give us some takeaways, like your, your number one takeaway from this book, Pitch Anything, to share with Ben's Business Book Club and podcast? Yeah, I, uh, one thing. I guess for me, I obviously it's about pitching, and I, and I was thinking about how can I use it as a business sense. Um, <clears throat> but more importantly, it, it made me think about my general communication with people. You know, as, as you kind of pointed to there, you know, about connecting with people in full stop. If you want to get something um, anywhere in life, you know, whether it's friends, partners, whatever, business, you can go on and on. A lot of it is all based around a connection. You know, people ultimately do uh, a connection, uh, business, you know, and form relationships with people they like and that they consistently see and, you know, they believe in the same message. You know, if... Um, someone's got a great product, but you, the company's a bit of a dick or the person's a bit of a dick, you know, are you going to work with them? You know, no. So if you manage to communicate in a way that people really believe in and buy in, then you, you're on, you're on to a winner. Um, you know, you want to work with people that you like and that's kind of how you present yourself is in that initial pitch, regardless of it's, you know, social meeting down the pub or pitching, you know, a couple of million pound deal. Um, it all comes down to that initial pitch. And I think we often get tied up in what we're trying to get across to someone. So again, bring it back to the business side of it, you know, and he talks about this a lot. And I suppose the exaggerated versions that you kind of think of are, you know, the analyst that they, they kind of go into people who have constantly given the facts and figures about everything. And you're like, well, I haven't retained any of that. And to be honest, I don't really believe it. Um, and you switch off or equally, you know, you get someone who's overpowering um, and the person who kind of, I've read some of their books and some of their work is Jordan Belfort from the Wolf of Wall Street of how it's very much, uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but power frame, if someone's like that and they're just hammering away at you, like I switch off as well. I'm just like, you lost me, mate. I, I haven't got time for you. It's the classic car salesman type thing. Um, so that was my kind of biggest takeaway was actually switch positions with the person you're trying to talk to, understand what they would want from the situation and, you know, how are you going to put it across? Um, yeah, in any area, business or personal. Oh, it's gone quiet. Yeah, I can't hear Ben now. No, I can't hear Ben. I can hear, I can see you, Ben, but I can't hear you. Well, I just... I had it on mute. Sorry, I was, I was coughing, so I, I put it on mute. Uh, yes, that's yeah. What I was saying is that it's that was a good um, summary as well of the book. Uh, what what you got away from it as as a whole. It's that's really what it's about. Um, <laughs> not not um, not being a dick and making people like you first and foremost, and connecting emotionally before rationally and. Yeah. It's like in sales, we call it like building rapport and that, but it's it's way well beyond that. It's, it's really understanding the brain. Um, but what we'll do is, uh, Ash, Ashton, do you want to give your your one your number one key takeaway from pitch anything as well, and then uh, I'll, I'll give some of my takeaways. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it was to um, just take control and um, like. Like harbour more like masculine energy of, you know, I, I'm I'm setting the stage and um, this is the scenario. Yet yeah, first read it, but you take control. Don't play Mr. Nice Guy and you know say thank you and like well it depends on the situation. But basically, um, like for me, like I said to Ben before, I was like this is like this book has made me realise that I need a personality change because I'm so like nice and nice and making sure everyone's happy, everyone's fine and, you know, putting them first and almost in it, I realised through re re reading a book how that's put me, it, that's why people don't respect me because I'm not, not not respecting myself, but I'm not, 
creating authority as such. Do you know what I mean? And um, so my biggest takeaway is the whole, you know, like like there was a scene where he, he had to uh, do a pitch for a guy, and uh, the, he was in the guy's office and he's explaining how you've got to like override what he thinks he's in a, an authority role. You've got to have the power role instead. So he said he was sat in a chair in between his two and um, what's the word? Not servants. Two colleagues. Assistants. Or- Assistant, that's the word, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and how he's like, he's like, oh, I'm hungry, and he goes and grabs a, a knife and a drink of water without asking, and he sits down and he gets hold of the guy who's the big boss's apple and cuts it in half and makes the point of this is how I like to do deals, fifty fifty. And I thought that is brash, you know. That was my taken from it was to be like, look, you're not being rude, but you are not a pushover, and you are. You are letting them know what your points are. So again, you're prepared. You, you know what you want to say, and then you you state in the fact that you've only got so much time. Be like, look, instead of them, um, instead of you going, oh, have you got ten minutes to hear my pitch? You're going, um, have I? Are you worthy of ten minutes of my time to listen to my pitch? Because I could speak to a lot of people. Um, you know, and I, that was the biggest takeaway for me. I thought that was really good. So it gives you that, like. It's nice to know what options there are. You don't have to just be one kind of character. You can flu- like be fluid and go into different frames as they talk a lot about. Um, yeah, so that was the biggest thing for me, was you can you take charge as long as you don't do it rudely because they'll switch off, but you do it in a way that intrigues them. That's the key word, is intrigue them. Yeah. So they want to know more about you because they could learn something from you. They could get something from you. They're gaining from you rather than you gaining from them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then uh, Dylan says, "Love the word servants." <laughs> um, so you get some servants. Um, yeah, that, that that's a good. That's a really. That's one of my key takeaways as well. That um, it's it's like you're saying, be direct, uh, but don't don't go over the top with it. You have to kind of. He says, balance it with kind of some humor. So you have. Yeah. It's, it's almost like you have to develop that idea of being. Uh, building your character so that people actually like you when you're being so direct because it, it can come across as arrogance it can come like overboard overpowering bossy but if you can somehow get off with that like grabbing the guy's apple out of his hand and or, or cutting the apple in half and sticking his feet up on the boss's uh, desk that was a pretty cool story he told us about that as well and like if the wrong person does that, they'll get thrown out by security. So like, you, you kind of have to watch, li- listen to this stuff and do it in the way that is natural to you that comes that you would do with friends or whatever. Because if you if, if you do this wrong, it blows the whole thing. But like you're saying, you have to get to the point because if you if you if you try to overplay it over like a- over analyze everything that you're doing and be too careful you end up not getting what you want so it's yeah yeah, going being direct with your communication and going after what you want and being pretty ruthless (laughs) in that situation yeah i think one of of my key takeaways was uh to he he said that talk to the like we've got these three modes of the brain and it was the the croc brain i think he says the middle the mid brain and the neocortex and the croc brain is like that part where we we speak to the emotion, emotional part of people. It's the, the, the primate um, brain that, that gets the connection first. You build the connection first, and then you go into uh, the, the second, the midbrain, and then the third, the, I think the neocortex was like, like the complex part that can work out, do the maths and reason. And uh, we kind of have to go through those steps. You have to go through each, all three of them before you can get to the like, the, the real facts that are needed in a presentation. Uh, I think Dylan actually posted that. He says, it's a Greek saying, ethos, path, pathos, and uh, uh, log- logos. Um, and that was that was how it was explained in, um, I think it's Talk Like Ted by Carmen Gallo. He, he, he analyzed all the top TED speakers. And he his book is basically about ethos, pathos, and uh, logos. And ethos was i think the emotional part that took up 
uh, the majority, I think 80%, the, the emotional part takes up 80% of all the best TED Talks in the world. And the, the, the actual logos, which is like data and facts, took up a very small percentage of those talks, which is very interesting. And this, this book kind of reconfirms that, what, what I learned in a talk like TED. Yeah, um, I think just to expand yeah, on that, ahead. The, the, um, the ethos bit, so what you're kind of going into is very much someone's vision, and that's what people buy into. Uh, I can't remember which the book was that I was reading, but they used an example of a, a voyage. So if you had two ships, you know, um, leaving the UK, going to discover the new world, and if someone came up to you and was like, right, we're going to go on a ship, we're going to discover the new world, we're going to come back with all these gems and luxurious things, we're going to see this, we're going to do that, you know, it's going to be an epic trip and it's something you'll never forget. And then you've got the other side of someone going, we're going to be on a boat for three months, you'll probably get scurvy, you'll be sick all the time. When we get there, we're going to meet barbarians, you're probably going to chop our limbs off, we're going to lose this, 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 this. Which one would you prefer to do? Yeah, you know, obviously the first one because it's you know it's that vision, it's the great thing, rather than the specific details of what you're going to go to. Yeah, yeah, spot on. And yeah. Dylan's mentioned that order as well: authority, emotional, and logical. And a large part of the the book, uh, pitch anything, was about creating your making yourself an authority, like what Ashton mentioned about kind of being more direct and not being a pushover. You're you're creating the frame that they are coming into your frame. Like you you're creating the structure of how this meeting's going to be run. You're not falling into someone else's frame and structure because that's when you start to be dominated and you don't end up getting what you want because it, you're kind of put through a system with like needing to speak to someone's assistant. You want one of the key takeaways was like no one can tell your story as well as you can. So like you don't want to speak to the assistant and get the assistant to pass it on to the the boss. Uh, the big boss, uh, that's the word, the phrase he used, I'm sure. And the big boss is the person who can make the, de the decisions, who can give you the funding and make things happen. So you need to you need to almost get past the gatekeeper and go directly with the person if possible. Because if you speak to assistants, they can pass the message on without that connection part that speaks to the crock brain. Yeah, exactly. A um, couple other things that I got, again, uh, it, it was the idea of neediness and um, being willing to walk away, which I think uh, salespeople can do a very bad job of that. They, they, they almost come across like they, this is all or nothing. They need to get this sale today. Kind of like what you see, what we're talking about, conferences and things, when you, they, they make you put your hand up and go to the back of the room, they're, they're really making you go and do something and they, they they need they need the sales by the end of that talk they're, they're going some of the speakers do a bad job of that because they 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 need the sale at that conference and it something shows that they're only doing this talk because they need your money and they need you to buy by the end of that that talk um, and when you get someone who's attracting attractive like Grant Cardone and even Ryan Pinnock for me who's not pushing the sale upon you, It's that's much more attractive uh, and you want to attract, you don't want to need, you don't want to push yourself upon. And being attractive is actually one of the key takeaways I got from the book as well. So, uh, Philip, have you got anything else to share about the book? Um, specifically from the book, I think it was what I actually really liked uh, as a general feature from the book is, you know, being, learning how to implement something like this. I think uh, there's a lot of books that you kind of get where they get carried away. You know, a lot of books can be summarized up in a, in a, in a short period of time. Um, and they go on to being very technical when you sort of drag out the details. And for someone like myself, as we were, I was talking with Ashton about this beforehand is, you know, I struggle to actually read a book because my attention span's gone um, much like Ben's has now. Um, <laughs> um but yeah for, so for me at the end of the book you know he summarized it and actually gave you some actionable tasks on how to implement these certain things and and, and how you can kind of pick it up um which i thought was was great um and something that i think and i wish to be honest most books would do um so that you can go out and put it into action because a lot of the time you, you kind of like you're fully motivated you're up for it you're kind of like yes i've learned so much from this book 
how do I get going? Whereas this one actually <laughs> had some actionable points, which you could go, yep, okay, I'm going to start off by, you know, looking out for the little traits. Like next time I go um, into a place and they're like, oh, uh, I'm here to so and meet so-and-so. I've already know next time I go into an estate agent, which I've got planned, um, and you, know, you usually have to go and wait on a sofa. I'll say, no, so I, I'll you just take me to the meeting room now. I've got to make some phone calls. So you're commanding that situation. And rather than going to the gatekeeper and being put in a, you know, a separate side of it, saying, actually, you know, my time's precious. I need to do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Take me mm-hmm. to that location now. So you're already in that sort of line of authority and moving forward. And I was like, I could already see the situations which I wanted to use it in. And I yeah. think that little okay. summary at the end really helped with that. Okay. The the summary at the end of the book? Yeah, it kind of gave you I don't know, I should have got my copy here, actually. Um it gave you kind of a couple of points at the end. It was like, okay, so at the end of the book, um it had like I think it was four four steps. It said how to start training yourself. And it's first of all was look at the um and where have I got it scribbled down? Yeah, the beta, again, uh, beta traps. traps. Yeah, so he talks about the beta traps, which are things like the classic ones is, you know, walking to a place and they're like, go up to the reception desk and they're and you're gonna go, oh, I wonder if you could help me. Well, first of all, you're putting yourself in a situation where, you know, they're you're giving them control and command. And then it's like I'm here to so and meet so and so. And they're like, Okay, well, you need to fill out this form, fill out the form. That's another command that you're giving in to them. Then it's like go and sit over there. Okay, I'll go and sit over there. We'll come and get you when we're ready. You know, these are all little beta traps. And and actually, you look around, um, they're in lots of different situations. And you kind of go, well, actually, how can I, can you know, not just ignore them, but go, okay, how can I kind of just restructure it? So, you, you know, you might be doing what they want you to do, but restructuring it so if you're gaining your control so if you are going into a meeting ultimately you want to start on that positive foot you want to put forward so if someone says oh can you fill out this form you say well um you should have most of my details already uh i need to be going to that room because i've got this call or you know um yeah that's fine i can do it whilst i'm in the meeting room can you take me to the meeting room now you know that's that's not out of the or that's not you know you're not being rude at that stage but you're you're mm-hmm you're taking on their information and saying, okay, how do I want to do this? How do I want to execute it? And that automatically starts that, that beta process um, of not being sort of tied down. But that's the classic yeah, one that everyone it's can like, you know. Yeah, that, that's, that's really good the, that you, you walk into Starbucks, for example, and they have a system and a process that they want, they, their staff are trained to, to stick to. And, when you go outside of that system, um, they they have like a sort of a bamboozlement. Like for example, we were we were learning at this workshop to go into like things like places like Starbucks and Pret and go and ask for a free coffee. And like literally, you're you're going you're basically their systems here, and you're just going like that and jumping right over it and saying going skipping the queue almost. So like you're just going straight to the person, looking them in the eyes and saying, "Can I have a free coffee?" And it's quite amazing how much you actually get stuff for free when you just go and ask directly like that, bypass the system and go for go and ask for what you want. What was the result? We were calling it a super conscious bamboozlement because that's the kind of face you get. You're, they're like, eh, what? <laughs> and the, the, some of the responses you get are funny because people are not trained or prepared for something outside of the, the, the structure. So you actually then, like you're saying, weaken their structure and then they don't know what the next thing is. So they, they actually take you as an authority at that stage. And then you get get what you end up getting around that, that process and getting a free coffee or like whatever it is that you're going for. It's not about getting a free coffee. It's, it's that that's about the, the practice that we're doing to like bypass that. Yeah. Did you get a free coffee? Yeah, I've had lots of free coffee since I learned this. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Free banana. <laughs> I'm gonna go into Aston Martin then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what What about you, Ashton? Um, what's the question again? Like the main. Oh, what I liked about the book the most the stories actually, because it kind of puts it into an example. So, like, like you say, there's facts, which is brilliant. So, uh, Phil said the points are brilliant. You can follow them because it tells you what to do. But the stories just give you that context of 
oh wow I get it you know like like it's almost mm. like that's a story that you watch because you've been told it so you can I get it so it can work like it, you know it, the stories were the, the best bit for me and again just the steps to it back up the stories that were told was the best for it all yeah yeah, I like I like what um you what you said as well, Philip, about um like and what you've said, Ashton, that it's as like having a having this the context of stories is is so important. I said that in the, the book club the other day that the the context and stories and books they like they type of books exist even in the nonfiction world for us people who like the who, who do like the facts and the data and want to get to the point. The context like you like kind of allow you to embed, embody the book without actually living it, like without yeah. actually putting yourself in into it. So Tim Ferriss, eh, not Tim Ferriss, Ty Lopez calls it like you put yourself in a a virtual reality or a, a simulator, and you you gain some experience without putting your body and put self at risk. Yeah. And it, it's a it's an, it's kind of what you get with these with the context and storytelling that you. And this is such a shortcut to to life because you can gather all this up in a, a book that's well put together like that. And they are rare where you get the context and some actionable steps like what Philip said. And that that's when that's what will put people off nonfiction book reading if they just get lots of data and then left with like nothing to do after it. That's there's nothing worse than that. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Dylan Dylan said the same. Yeah, it's the books with a story, then practical advice are rare gems, and it's true. There's is like a very good author has to write these types of books where you get the a balance of both worlds. Yeah. yeah. I must admit, I don't understand why some a lot of you know nonfiction books do the book, and then why they don't have you know. A worksheet or a landing page that you can go to and you can get actually like the tools in order to be able to execute it you know mm -hmm. um, yeah. i guess this is the entrepreneurial mind sort of coming up but you kind of get people involved you know through the book and then you're like well mm -hmm. i might as well grab their email and all, all their mar for marketing stuff because you know they've bought in so why not add you know add on stuff um such as workbooks yeah. how to go through it how to actually implement it rather than just the you know the pitch which a book you know in a lot of these types of uh books is mm -hmm. you know it's just mm -hmm. a pitch on what they're doing so you kind of buy into it and go oh i love their 10x or uh, you know that's you're, you're kind of you're you're embarking on their story uh through the book but the action of the points you know it's an easy second sale which we all know is the easiest sale yeah yeah exactly yeah so they they need to <clears throat> well, Oren Clough does a good job because he's got his website that he mm. refers you to to, to yeah. learn all. Get some. Uh, well, I was listening to the audio book, and he recommends uh, going to the, some of the figures that you would get in the book, and just getting you, giving you that extra information that you need to kind of follow up on all this this stuff that's in your head now, or even in your notes. It's just it's not practical when it's just there because. It, it just gets it gets lost and we need like to implement it right away or it's very difficult to to use it it goes into your subconscious 100 percent. like if you read enough books you start to do things that you realize that oh i learned that from this book and you, you use a bit of your own intuitive genius to take what's in your subconscious and like in your memory and then in situations that that's what we're reading in these types of books be becomes really useful because it is in there somewhere and you use it. But what is much better is when an author structures a book so that you actually go and use it right away yeah. rather yep. than relying on your memory. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we've got mm, a couple of live viewers. Uh, let's see. Okay, Dylan's having his breakfast while listening to us. Uh, he's in the United States. Hey, I noticed that he said, what's wrong with Americans on one of my comments? There is nothing wrong with Americans. Yeah. Just over in the UK, we have a preconceived idea of um, seminars and stuff being over there, being full-on happy, clappy, or, you know, full-on push you everything. I've got a lot of American friends, and a lot of them uh, came to my gym. So nothing against Americans. 
it's just Nothing, a, huge yeah. general, it's a huge generalization that i was using as an example <laughs> yeah yeah no. yeah the, these personal development uh, seminars and things like some of them probably do look cheesy to the outside world if you've not been yeah. to them but there sure is a lot of value to get a lot of americans as well you know um you know i think we have a, a look on and I, I, this kind of leads back to actually what i was saying earlier it's no matter what you go to, whether it's a Tony Robbins event, you know, which is notoriously a bit more jump up, clap around type stuff, mm-hmm. you know, have, know what you want to get out of the situation. And again, this leads back to pitch anything. It's know what you want to get out of your pitch and what you want to get control of and actually go to that. So, you know, if you are going to particular events or you are going to a meeting, know mm-hmm. what you want to get out of it. It doesn't matter what the surrounding uh, situation is that you can still have control if you know what you're looking for and how to approach it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I, I like your your strategy. So just plan before you like throw yourself into these like environments where you, whether you're pitching or whether you're going into to learn and get something away from anything. So it's kind of like planning out your planning out your day because the day goes much better when you do that, and we should do it for literally everything. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, I don't know how long pe- people's attention span don't last long, as we've learned in this book. So I think we'll we'll close it off here <laughs> um, because we un- we understand the mind a wee bit better. But everyone who's in watching this or listening to this on the podcast, uh, thanks for joining us, and I hope you found value from it. I highly recommend, and we all three of us highly recommend that you you read the uh, Oren Clough. Is it Oren Clough? Oren Clough, pitch anything. Yeah. Um, I think, um, yeah, takeaway, I, I would thoroughly recommend this book to anyone, uh, not necessarily someone just in business or looking to pitch, but actually just from the communication point of view. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you're talking to people leaving school, you know, people leaving college, people uni- leaving university, we've all been in that situation where you have to walk into a room, open that door, and you're dreading having to talk to that person in front of you. You know, having mm. stuff like this, how to communicate, it makes it so much easier. Um, yeah. 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 And ev- everything's a negotiation. And a, and we're always selling ourselves in business and out before we've ever even discovered what business is. Like you're saying, you're always selling something. You're always negotiating and either getting what you want or not getting what you want. Sell or be sold. Like when Grant Cardone says, you're being sold on their idea or your own idea. Any last words, Ashton? <laughs> um, but I, I, I like I, the whole American thing about them being a bit too woo. I love it. I think it's brilliant. But I, but like that's one of the reasons why I love Grant is because he is like <clears throat> out there. But when you listen to what he's saying, oh, it's gold. Like when he says points, you're like, oh my god, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just. Like communication overall, that's what it, this is about, isn't it? You, everyone needs to master communication skills, and they really do because everyone's got good points to make. But if you can't get that point to somebody that you need that point to come across to clearly, then you're going to be frustrated. And this book will beat that frustration, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, well, well worth a, a watch of anything on TED or anything like that from um olaf the other guy that i actually when we talk about uh pitching and present uh presentations worth a, a look is a guy called david j phillips if you look him up on youtube um he talks about the dopamine release which again is something that they mention in uh in this book um yeah well worth a and it's it's annoying how it gets you going um so you can you can feel it kind of working and actually what you're trying to do and it's creating that excitement for you but yeah well worth I'll, I'll pop it in the comments actually i'll pop a link in the comments for this yeah um, yeah that'd be good yeah please do yeah. sounds interesting good. yeah great thanks thanks philip thanks ashton for, for joining me on here and uh thanks for your the the little notice i gave you and still coming on i'm i'm impressed <laughs> yeah cool no problem okay. at all. Um, if guys want to connect with me then feel free to on facebook or linkedin or my businesses, which are Cambridge City Living, Cambridge City Accommodation, or PJ Wells. Pitch. Yep. <laughs> and how could yeah. There you go. How, uh, pitch yourself, Ashton, if you want. Hey, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram currently. Um, Ashton Bowen Photography, and 
yeah, and I'll be getting more into social media myself. That's another to-do list. But yeah, so Facebook's my favorite mm-hmm. and good connection cool. thing to find me. Cool. And I, I hang out on in, in my own community with these awesome guys um, and a thousand more uh, entrepreneurs and business owners in Ben's Business Book Club. So join us there and I'll, I'll share many business tips, especially marketing and search engine optimization and book reviews of the best books in, in the nonfiction world. So uh, connect with me there it's on uh, facebook it's a private facebook group it's free to join and get involved and maybe you'll be on a podcast like this soon okay thanks everyone bye for now bye. cheers ben bye thanks bye